We will now open up the meeting for Thursday, April 5th, 2018. Gary Bowden? Here. Frank Ferrari? Here. Marshall Gaunt? Here. Ryan Kennedy? Here. Chad Sigmund? Here. Vice Mayor Malpajo? Mayor Gaunt? Here. This evening we have our prayer and pledge by Councilmember Gaunt. <coughs> we can all recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a presentation this evening by Councilmember Sigma. If the group from Hope Inc. would come forward, please. Hello, Sigma. Yeah. Hello, Sigma. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I've got some extras if you want them. <laughs> a proclamation, whereas sexual assault is a crime that affects every person in this community, and whereas one in six boys and one in four girls will experience sexual assault before the age of 18, and whereas on college campuses, one in five women and one in 16 men are sexually assaulted, and whereas prevention and education about sexual assault and consent must be taken as a priority to combat sexual assault in our community, and whereas we ask the community to learn the laws of consent, reevaluate where respons responsibility should lie, create a culture where everyone can openly and honestly talk about the healthy relationships in consensual sex, and challenge your thinking around this crime. And whereas West Virginians across the state are coming together to show their support for victims of sexual assault and harassment. And whereas we are here to say we believe you. But not only that, we aim to end sexual violence in our communities and campuses. And whereas Hope Inc. strongly supports the efforts of national, state, and local partners and of every citizen to actively engage in public and private efforts to prevent sexual violence. Now, therefore, I, Catherine A. Goings, Mayor of the City of Clarksburg, do here proclaim April 2018 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month uh, in the City of Clarksburg and to encourage everyone to start conversations, take appropriate action, and support one another to create a safer environment for all. So I uh, witnessed there before, uh, uh, I here unto set my hand have caused the official seal of the city of Clarksburg to be affixed here to this fifth day of April 2018. Catherine A. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I just want to thank you again for your support and allowing us to come and do our proclamations. And um, we're uh, just want to spread a little awareness because April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And I um, just want to keep the um, the amazing wave of empowerment and support and belief going um, that had started with the hashtag Me Too movement and the hashtag Times Up movement. Um, so we're just hoping to keep that going and, and being there to support victims and believing them. So if you need any help or services from Hope, um, give us a call. Our numbers are on those things. We'll leave a few of them around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Approval of the minutes of the regular session of March 15, 2018. So moved. Second. If there are no objections, the motion carries. Petitions, communications, and public hearings. I don't believe we have any this evening. City manager's report and update. Just under general updates uh, for the park board, uh, for the Frank Loria baseball field turf project, the grading and base stone 
work had, had been completed and as of yesterday, Wednesday, April 4th, AstroTurf uh, has begun installing the turf. Um, pretty much all the infield has been completed. Uh, part way out in the outfield is completed as well. So if you have an opportunity to drive by, um, it, it's really amazing work that they're doing now. So they will continue that uh, through this evening and tomorrow and we'll continue uh, through Saturday if necessary. Demolition, all the URA and city demo contracts have been fulfilled with the exception of 631 Drummond Street, uh, which we're hoping to come to a conclusion on that uh, once we can get uh, the house de-energized and First Energy to disconnect uh, the power to that structure. Uh, Public Works has completed their current list of 27 structures. Uh, in addition, Public Works has raised also uh, 101 Stewart Street and the garage on Camden Street for a total of 29 structures. Uh, they will also be relocating to complete a garage in the Northview section of town um, next, but uh, they will be starting the spring cleanup as well. Uh, vehicle and equipment purchases, uh, sealed bids are being advertised for two uh, pieces of equipment and vehicles. One for the compost department, which is 11 cubic yard comp compactor truck for the yard waste collections. These funds were approved in the 2017-18 budget. The bid opening will be Tuesday, May 1st at 2 p.m. and council will consider awarding the bid on Thursday, May 3rd. Sanitary board uh, also has a vehicle out to bid for a four wheel drive truck with a nine foot long utility body for a crew use. Uh, the funds were approved as well in 1718 uh, sanitary board budget. The bid opening for this item will be Thursday, May 3rd at 2 p.m. and the sanitary board will consider awarding this bid on Tuesday, May 8th. Spring cleanup begins Monday, April 9th, and it will continue uh, the weeks of Monday, April 9th through April 13th, Monday, April 16th through April 20th, and conclude the week of Monday, April 23rd through Friday, April 27th. Economic development, uh, city will be attending an on-site design study field review uh, for the proposed Northview Bridge replacement on Tuesday, April 10th at 10 a.m. This is a follow-up for uh, a meeting Anthony Bellotti and I had in Charleston uh, while we are down there from the Municipal League with the uh, State DOH office in Charleston uh, regarding this bridge. Uh, so this, this uh, pro uh, project is moving forward. Glen Elk, uh, Glen Elk Apartments project, uh, which will be located at 309 Mayo Street. The city and the Clarksburg Regional Housing Authority is accepting public comments until Monday, May 7th, 2018 on the environmental review and finding of no significant impact, uh, which is called a FONSI, as well as request for release of funds to undertake the Glen Elk Apartments project. Uh, <clears throat> about a week, week and a half ago, we also held a, um, uh, uh, for, uh, Section 108 review here in Council Chambers, a public uh, comment period as well for the, one of the structures located on that property, which is an old garage uh, that is gonna be raised in order for uh, this developer to move that project forward. Um, a formal announcement of the entire project will be forthcoming um, after the FONSI review has been completed and any feedback we get at that point in time can be incorporated into that announcement. Robins the Grand Performing Arts Center, door frame installation for the entire building is approximately 99% completed. Drywall installation is 88% complete. HVAC installation in the ballroom is approximately 98% completed and installation of the wall assembly around the ADA ramp in the lobby is approximately 95% complete. And window installation in the ballroom is also 95% complete. Those you can see from the exterior, uh, those uh, windows uh, do resemble the appearance of the 1930s look with the transom. Uh, so th those do look really elegant to the building and energy efficient as well. Clarksburg Beauty Academy will have an open house on Tuesday, April 10th beginning at 4 p.m. to celebrate uh, 50 years in business. Uh, that'll be open to the public to come enjoy as well as council. Uh, if you have an opportunity, please stop down. I'm sure they'll like to see you. Opportunity Zones uh, mentioned prior to, to this meeting and other council meetings that we did submit uh, three proposals to be declared Opportunity Zones in Clarksburg. Uh, the state did extend the deadline 30 days, so we anticipate approximately April 20th, the governor to submit those to the U.S. Department of Treasury. We have not heard any word as if uh, any of ours have been selected to date. Police, uh, six new hires were sworn in on Thursday, March 29th. Three candidates are currently in the FTO program, and two out of the three do remain in the West Virginia State Police Academy. Um, then we do have an officer coming back beginning on Sunday, April 15th. So as of April 15th, we will have 41 certified officers and five non-certified officers. So upon completion, we'll have 46 certified officers in total. 
uh, bike patrol. Um, when the weather improves here shortly in the next week or two, uh, that will resume uh, for the bike patrol and they will be in the downtown area as well as the neighborhoods as well, uh, or in addition, uh, patrolling those neighborhoods. Drug house ordinance, uh, the Carsburg Police Department enforced the drug house ordinance at 128 Winding Way. A warrant was served on Friday, March 30th, which many controlled substances and firearms were seized. Then the order of abatement was issued by Chief Hilliard on Tuesday, April 3rd. Uh, so that, uh, that is working the way we predicted it to. Uh, there's other homes out there uh, that we've received complaints on. Uh, the chief and deputy chief are looking into those issues as well. Uh, we're hoping to enact that ordinance uh, and, and utilize that uh, several more times coming up. Four years, we received two of them, one from Sarah Atkins from Teal Consulting on Friday the 23rd. Really what they're doing is looking for uncashed municipal issued checks and dated warrants over $699. Um, this is information that we provided to them um, at, from the finance department and we did respond to the request on March 29th and the information will be provided to her on April 13th as we're gathering that data uh, to submit it. Uh, for your request, we did receive another one from Mr. Martin Schaefer on Friday, March 30th, uh, which we received as returning to work on Monday, April 2nd, requesting to see all rental property registration forms since June 30th, 2017 to present. Uh, we did respond to Schaefer on Tuesday, April 3rd, really requesting clarification for the documents that he was requesting and uh, so we can give him a quote of the reproduction of the cost of the documents. Uh, so we sent the formal response Thursday, April 5th inform him the documents would be available on May 11th. Um, there's about 3,500 uh, rental units so far that have been registered, so you can imagine the amount of paperwork that's gonna be required to, uh, to be copied. Um, so all the, all the phone numbers as well on those applications are being redacted, as we don't feel that is uh, uh, information av readily available to the public, as many people have their phones unlisted, so we felt that that wouldn't uh, comply to the FOIA. Um, and just real quickly, I just wanted to uh, pass along an email that Kim uh, did receive um, from Jennifer Lopez uh, from the Literacy Volunteers of Harrison County. Um, I would like to thank you and the City of Clarksburg for renewing our funding for the fiscal year 2018-19. We operate on a tight budget and the $500 means so much to us in terms of rent and expenses. Um, so. She wanted us to pass that along, so I wanted the council to hear that she uh, was very thankful for that as well. And then, typically, we don't, we don't see many, receive many thank yous, so I also want to pass this along as well. Um, if you can remember, those who were on council uh, for the last several years, we had an issue over on Spring Avenue regarding a lot of drainage issues. Uh, Mr. Lake uh, has responded as well uh, with a thank you, but the, the project uh, was completed in June of 2016. For a lot of these repairs, it was a cost to the sanitary board of $115,000 to take corrective action. Mr. Lake did uh, submit a letter um, to, to Mr. Velotti on Sunday, February 25th, 2018. I encountered a backup of a floor drain during a moderate rain about, at about 1 a.m. He called the emergency line for the sewer department and within 15 minutes, Foreman Larry Yoders came to my house to assess the problem. He contacted others in the sewer department by 1.30 a crew was using a power snake to unplug the sewer. The crew worked until approximately 30, 3.30 trying to unplug the sewer to no avail. We removed a rain downspout from the system to help alleviate the problem. Sunday morning, Mr. Yoders was again on site with a sewer line camera to determine the location of the trouble. Using the newly opened downspout access, he was able to determine the location and unplug the sewer. Mr. Workman was also on site Sunday morning. I want to thank the city for their assistance and acknowledge Mr. Yoder's helpfulness, quick response, and his earnest desire to solve a homeowner's problem. His actions went above and beyond what would be considered just during your job. Mr. Yoder's should receive some sort of acknowledgement from the city for his work ethic and problem-solving efforts. As you are probably aware, I had a major issue with stormwater runoff on Rosemont Street extension, which caused his home to flood on numerous occasions. At the time of my last flooding, Mr. Yoders and Mr. Workman both did an outstanding job helping to alleviate my flooding problem. They rebuilt a catch basin behind my house and built an asphalt berm on Head Street to keep water from being routed behind my house. I should have acknowledged the effort of these men long ago, but I failed to do so at that time. 
The city subsequently issued a construction contract to expand the effluent line to 24 inches, increase the size of the drop inlets, and install a street drain across Hammond Highway. These efforts appear to have solved the flooding issue. We had several large rains last summer and fall, which would have resulted in flooding again. Thankfully, this did not occur after storm sewer enhancements. I checked the storm drain lines, and they appeared to be flowing at about 33% of capacity during the hard, hardest rain. I request that the city maintain the asphalt berm on Hedge Avenue. Snow removal has created several holes in the berm. So we've done all the, the continued work that you've requested, but I want to bring to uh, Council's, uh, uh, to, to you, make you aware that he does appreciate the city's efforts and want to acknowledge uh, two of the exceptional employees within the Public Works Department. So this letter was also placed in their files as well as uh, provided them as well. Good. Good. We all received numerous calls on that. You're right. We do. Thank you. No unfinished business, new business, consideration of a petition filed by James Larry II requesting the rezoning of property located on North 13th Street from a B2 designation to a B3 designation. I move that we refer this item to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Council comments? I'll go ahead and start. Um, on Monday, April 23rd, we will be having Shadow Day for the Mayor's Youth Council. And Annette, I believe you'll be sending all the council members a, a copy of a letter if you want to participate. Uh, we usually have them throughout various departments in the city and then we take them to lunch and it kind of completes their year on the Mayor's Youth Council. So you'll be getting something in your mailbox for that. Um, congratulations to the Chief for the drug bust on Winding Way. I don't know how many of you have been getting calls, but I know Martin and I have received several, so um, I'm glad that we were able to enact that drug house ordinance. So thank you and, and everybody that was involved. Um, congratulations to Chad and, and Heather for their new baby and Susan. Now she's another, a grandmother once again. Um, on March 24th, the West Virginia Broadcasting Association passed out an award to Gary Bowden for the best talk show in a ranked market. So Gary, congratulations on receiving that award. And that's all that I have. Cool. Uh, I just wanted to also highlight the work being done at Clarksburg City Park in Nutter Ford. Uh, I, I did, haven't been up close yet. I intend to, well actually I have been in the preliminary stages. Haven't been up close since they actually started laying the turf. Um, but the, the photos I've seen and what I can see from driving by the road, I mean, it, it really is exciting and it's gonna be a wonderful facility for baseball players and college teams and all. It's, it's, I mean, it's something that the city can be very proud of. It's gonna be a first class, uh, First class feel, and, and um, Martin didn't mention, but the uh, the the work is progressing nicely too on the indoor facility that we also helped fund. Correct? Uh, I, I'm not sure where they are inside, but you can see the big shell building now that's up there in the park, and that's going to be a big asset to our families here in the community, particularly when. Uh, our, our winters extend into May like it seems it's going to do this year. I'm, I'm sure a facility like that will be highly utilized. Uh, just I want to commend uh, city manager and our Dominique and whoever else might be involved in our social media. Uh, I, I, I believe that uh, I, I'm, I'm seeing just a lot more presence of, of what we're doing on social media, and I like that, and I think it's very helpful to uh, uh, to citizens. And, and Martin, I thank you too, because I feel like we're getting a few more updates when there's something like the drug bust, when there's a fire, when there's some kind of a incident that we may not have all the details on yet. It really is helpful for us to get a little bit of a tip off uh, because folks are going to start calling, and uh, I think that's very helpful. Lastly. Uh, you'll, Annette, are they going to be getting a, a, a letter or an email or about the Robinson Grant or the Grant? I sent an email to all of council. Okay. 
and um, the department heads, I think. All right. Everybody's going to be getting a, uh, uh, an email about the final show in the Grand Performances Concert Series, which is a, a season-long event uh, sponsored and funded by the Cultural Foundation. And the uh, Dolores Yoke, who serves on the Cultural Foundation, wanted to extend an opportunity to you all uh, to get tickets for this event and acknowledging the fact that this concert series is one of the uh, groups, if you will, of performances that will now move into our new Robinson Grand Performing Arts Center. She thought it'd be nice if we have good representation from city leaders and council members at that last event, which is April 26th at Robert Seabird High School. And again, you should get a notice on that. And I included the phone number uh, for Dolores Yoke uh, if you'd like to get tickets. Thank you. Um, yes, I just want to say I've received a, a couple uh, thank yous. Uh, one from Sean Zedju, who's the, the president of the um, Historical Preservation Alliance for the funding in this year's uh, budget for the keeping the cemetery maintained and also Mike Spadafore contacted me and they were all very pleased about the funding uh, for the Vance House. So I believe that's the Historical Clarksburg Museum or, or Historical Society of Clarksburg. But so there's some, some great things to, and nice to, to hear that um, they're happy about that. I also want to hope everyone had a happy Easter. I had the, the best of my life. Uh, I thank God, you know, it's just a, I feel like a different person. This is it's amazing and I want to thank everyone that's uh, come out to me through either Facebook phone calls or coming up to give me a hug or a handshake. Uh, I really appreciate it because we're, we're, Heather and I are very blessed. It's uh, new beginnings. So God bless you all. Um, first of all, I just wanted to join the many other people congratulating to Chad and his uh, wife on their new baby. That, and the fact that the baby's name is Lily was born on Easter is kind of awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, I also wanted to throw out just a couple of informational things. Um, April 17th is the last day to register to vote. If you want to vote in the May primary and you have it registered already, or if you for some reason want to change parties and vote in a different primary than you have in the past, that's the last day to do that. And, uh, and also, I'm very excited that for the first time in many years, there will be a spring cleanup in Clarksburg. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, get, uh, getting some things out of my basement. I'm sure lots of other people are too. That's all I have. I want to uh, commend the chief uh, for a job well done uh, with, the, uh, with the drug house. And, uh, I know getting the, the uh, department up to, to staff uh, is a big deal because that's uh, it takes the manpower to get the job done and to do the extra work and uh, you're doing a real good job and, and the department's looking good so that's all. Frank? Uh, well I guess you know based on what we've heard tonight I guess it's I guess some commendations and congratulations are in order as far as Chad of course congratulations on your new on your new child I'm sure that's you're pretty excited and congratulations. Uh, again you know we just heard example of how our public works, what they do for the community, 1.30 in the morning, 15 minutes, they're out there. I mean, these are the, these guys, and, you know, and I've seen this over the years during my terms here, what these guys do and all time, different times and times of the evening. Uh, to Johnny Workman especially and Larry Yoders, I want to commend them. Uh, and thanks, Martin, for bringing that to our attention. And also, uh, congratu I want to congratulate or commend the chief of the drug house ordinance. I think, you know, there were some questions about what we were doing with this ordinance and why are we doing this. And here's a perfect example of probably eliminating a home that was uh, unoccupied, pushing and selling drugs in our community. And I think this council stands united on trying to fight these, these, this drug problem. And I think this is a perfect example of how you do that. That's all I have. Anything else? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Meeting adjourned.